Can we just talk about how awesome and underrated Cloudtop Cruise is for a bit? As far as I'm concerned, this is one of the best tracks in the entire game. You start off on this little beanstalk and then drive through the clouds, which is already pretty awesome since it's really the only sky slash cloud themed track in the game. Then you land on one of those little rainbow ride style ships from Mario 64, which shoots you like a cannon into a literal thunderstorm. And man, how tight is that electric guitar transition? I mean, look, just being real with you guys, I'm an absolute sucker for good music, and this course might just have my favorite soundtrack in the entire game. Especially when you consider that it borrows inspiration from the Gusty Garden Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy, which itself is easily the best music in that game. But you guys aren't here to hear me gush about why I love this track, you're here for some epic time trial strategies. So welcome, dear racers, to part 13 of Basic Training, where we're going to cover everything, well, almost everything, you need to know about Cloudtop Cruise on 150cc. I say that it's almost everything you need to know because the thundercloud section I just talked about adds a special brand of hellishness and frustration to the course that ironically makes it one of my least favorite tracks to time trial despite how much I actually love racing on it, but we'll get into that a bit later. As always, we're going to cover the recommended builds, mushroom strats, coin lines, and other advanced tips and tricks to help you start mastering the course. I'll be breaking this tutorial down into three parts. In level 1, we're going to cover a version of the run that uses no advanced strategies and should be widely reproducible with just a little bit of practice. In level 2, we're going to cover strategies that I use in my current personal best. And finally, we'll close out the tutorial with level 3 that goes over the world record strategies. If you're finding these tutorials useful, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a like and a comment since this not only lets me know that you're enjoying the content, but it also lets YouTube know to recommend these videos to other racers who might also be looking for tips and tricks on how to improve. Before I get started, I just want to quickly mention that I hit 2,000 subscribers earlier in the week, and I'm super thankful for all that support. That being said, almost all my watch time is actually coming from people who aren't subscribed to the channel yet, so if you find yourself checking out many of my tutorials, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell beside it so that you can stay up to date with my latest content since I release a new video every week. With all that out of the way, let's take your gameplay sky high and check out Cloudtop Cruise. The recommended build for this course is going to be Dry Bowser, Wiggler, Rollers, and Cloud Glider. This build places a decently high emphasis on speed, and if you're not planning on doing any of the advanced strategies, it's pretty good for a couple reasons. First of all, in the level 1 version of the run, you're only building up a handful of mini turbos into one super mini turbo per lap. The other reason is that the lightning section is basically just one long 9 second straightaway, so having a build that puts a little bit more emphasis on speed is going to be more beneficial here. Now when we move on to level 2, we're going to start creating some opportunities for ourselves to build up extra mini turbos, and to maximize the power of the mini turbos, we're going to want to downsize a little bit and swap out Dry Bowser for Waluigi. The world record takes this strategy up to 11, and therefore swaps out Wiggler for Biddy Buggy, which has the highest mini turbo stat in the entire game, coupled with the lowest speed stat. And with all that out of the way, let's check out the track. So the level 1 version of the run is pretty straightforward for the most part, and almost doesn't even really need any explanation. One thing to mention is that this is the first course that we've encountered that has bounce pads in it. Believe it or not, these little bastards are going to be one of the most frustrating things in the entire track for reasons that we'll get into in the level 2 version of the run. For now though, suffice it to say that it's just a series of mini turbos around the first few turns followed by a trick off the cloud and a trick off the second bounce pad. Before we get to the ship, we're going to want to take an inside line and grab the one coin here, and then once we get onto the ship we want to go right. This is for two reasons. One, the right path is slightly faster, and for two, it allows us to grab two coins, whereas the left path would only allow us to grab one. Now if you follow the line that I've been telling you to take so far, we're going to have to take the left path on lap two to grab our last coin. Now this does seem to be faster than the alternative, which is to take a wide line before getting onto the ship, grabbing the three coins, and then taking the right hand path every time. Additionally, the time loss from this alternative strategy comes almost entirely at the front part of the track, and this is going to be incredibly problematic when we move on to the level 2 version of the run. So, yeah, just take a tight line and the right path for lap 1. After that, we're going to trick off this cannon glider. An interesting property of cannon gliders is that when you land from them, your cart tends to be moving pretty slowly. And so, one of the older mushroom strategies in this course is to just use the mushroom as soon as you land from the glider on all three laps, so that you can get back up to top speed immediately. And now we come to the reason why I hate time trialing this track so much. Many of the tracks in this game have moving pieces that you need to be aware of. For example, the Goombas on Mario Circuit, 
the orange boost ramps on Mount Wario, and the lightning bolts on this course. For basically every track in the game except Moo Moo Meadows, these moving pieces operate on what I'm going to henceforth refer to as global cycles. What this means is that these moving pieces will be in the same place at the same time every single time you play the track. On Cloudtop Cruise, this applies to the lightnings. I've overlaid four instances of me running this track and started the recording at exactly 45 seconds. As you can see, the lightning bolts are always striking the same boost ramps at exactly the same time. Okay, so what's the problem here? If they're operating on global cycles, then they should be predictable, right? So it should be easy enough to figure out where they're going to be? Well, yeah, that is true, but the problem is that you basically have no room to improvise here. You need to know exactly which boost pads you're going to get and exactly what path you're going to take on every single lap. But basic, I can hear you saying. When you're time trialing, aren't you trying to be as consistent as possible and take the same path every time anyways? Again, yes, that is true, but the problem is that the path you need to take is going to change on every single lap. And not only that, but once you start to improve by even just a little bit, you basically have to learn a whole new set of paths on every lap. At an extreme end, this can lead to a situation called pace lock, where you literally have to play certain parts of the track more slowly just to make sure that you can get a good cycle. Now look, I know that I'm spending a ton of time on this, but it's important to know how this course works and why it's so insanely difficult to get better at. This is also why I'm not going to spend any amount of time on telling you exactly which boost ramps to hit on every lap, because it's going to depend on your own personal pace, and you're going to have to just experiment until you find something that works for you. What I can offer is some general advice on what you want to be trying to accomplish in this section. On lap 1, prioritize grabbing coins. You want to try and have 8 coins by the time you get to the glider ramp. On laps 2 and 3, you basically just want to make sure that you're hanging out on the left hand side of the track as much as possible, hitting the orange boost pads in the center if you can. Once you get enough practice, you'll start to get a sense of what kind of pace you're on, and you'll know, for example, that there are certain circumstances where going from the center boost pad to the left boost pad is going to result in you getting to the left boost pad as it's getting struck by lightning, in which case you're going to want to make your way to the right hand side of the track to hit the right boost pad instead. Okay, so now that we're done whining about the thundercloud section, we're almost done with the lap. After you go off the glider, you're going to want to start holding down the drift button and right on the joystick while you're in midair so that when you land, you'll be immediately in a drift. Try to land slightly left of center of the brown platform and then immediately start holding left to widen your drift angle. Once you're basically right next to the leaf, then you can finally start holding right and that should get you on top of the first leaf. Make sure to trick off it and you should be able to get on the second leaf without too much hassle. Trick off the leaf and we are done with the lap. Like I said before, the only real difference on lap 2 is that when you get to the ship, you want to take the left hand path to grab your last coin. But on lap 3, you're going to want to take the right hand side path again. Now let's take a look at how all these strats are put together in a full run.
All right, let's move on to the level two version of the run. There's a few major differences here. First of all, right off the bat, you'll notice two things. One, we've switched to the Waluigi build for the reasons I mentioned before. And we're using a mushroom right at the start of the run by holding down the item button before the race starts. There are two reasons why we want to use the mushroom here. The first is to get at the top speed as quickly as possible. The second, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. The next difference in strategy is in how we take the first orange boost ramp. As we use the mushroom, we want to get to the right hand side of the track as quickly as possible and start a right drift. You almost want to be grinding on the side of the track here, and once you build up the mini turbo, rather than release it and trick off the ramp like before, what you want to do is immediately start a left drift and hold down left on the joystick because you want to try your damnedest to build up a mini turbo here. The reason is because for the bounce pad, if you release that second mini turbo at the same time as you trick off the bounce pad, it'll give you what's called a super bounce, which launches you much faster and much farther than a normal trick. There's actually a little bit more to it than that though. I'm not 100% on how this works because on 200cc, I never have any problems getting the super bounce, but on 150, it seems to be a lot more finicky. I found that I can consistently get it if I'm kind of on the edge of the bounce pad when I do the super bounce, which is why I mentioned that you almost want to be grinding on the right hand side of the track on the turn before the bounce pad. But yeah, other than that, it's basically just a mini turbo trick off the bounce pad to get the super bounce. This is why I mentioned that the bounce pad is one of the more frustrating parts of the course, because it's pretty inconsistent, and sometimes you'll feel like you did exactly what you needed to to get the super bounce, but it just won't work. And if you don't get it on lap one, it's going to be a huge problem for reasons which we will again get into in just a minute. Now after you do the super bounce, do a counter hop to the left before starting a right drift and use your second mushroom. I know, I know, I'll explain later why we're using the mushrooms in this way. After you build up the mini turbo, do a left slide, which basically means just do a drift without building up a mini turbo, and then trick off the cloud and the second bounce pad like before. I'm not 100% sure on why the slide is necessary, but basically every high level run that I've watched does this, so I'm assuming there's got to be a purpose behind it. After grabbing the coin and building up the super mini turbo, we're actually going to want to do a right hop before tricking off the ramp. Again, I'm not exactly sure why this works, but basically hopping like this kind of launches you forward and causes you to get to the ground much more quickly. The next difference in strategy is the cannon glider that we talked about before. In the level 1 version of the run, I mentioned that you should trick off of it, but for those of you who have watched my other videos, you know that for cannon gliders we always want to do fast glider strats by hopping on top of the glider ramp instead of tricking off of it. Now just like before, when you land, use your last mushroom. Now this first orange boost pad on the left hand side of the track is the entire reason why we used our mushrooms in the way that we did. Now as you can tell, by the time that I get to it, the lightning is pretty close to striking that boost pad. The mushroom strats that I used were entirely geared towards making sure that I got a good cycle here, since this allows me to hang out entirely on the left hand side of the track and safely hit all the boost pads and grab all the coins. This is also why missing the super bounce at the beginning of the lap is so frustrating, because if you miss that super bounce, it is still possible to make this cycle, but it's incredibly difficult. The last difference in strategy is that right before the glider, I actually do a right hop on top of the orange boost pad on the left hand side of the track. I hate to sound like a broken record here, but again, I'm not exactly sure why this works. I just know that doing this hop and then going off the glider actually gives you more air time, and this course is, as far as I'm aware, the only course aside from Shy Guy Falls where getting more air time off the glider in this way is actually faster. More specifically, this seems to save around 0.15 seconds or so on each lap, so not the biggest time save, but it's free so you might as well go for it. And that's it for my level 2 strategies. This is a really long course, and I'm not going to fluff up the video by having you watch a full run of my PB, but I've included a link to that run in the description if you're interested in checking it out. Now let's move on to the world record strategies. Now the world record swaps out Wiggler for Bitty Buggy, and the reason they do this is because it allows them to do some crazy mini turbo strats after the first super bounce, which actually allows them to get a second super bounce. I'm going to let the rest of this lap just play out, but as you'll see, this is part of what allows them to get that cycle that I mentioned while only using one mushroom. Other than that, there's really only one more crazy thing that happens in the world record runs. I'm not going to go into any amount of detail on this, but suffice it to say that if you get good cycles, you can actually do this really weird strategy where you intentionally bonk the wall before the glider to help you build up an ultra mini turbo. This allows you to do glider vectoring by holding a down and right angle on the joystick while your ultra mini turbo is still going off. This only saves time if you both get a good cycle and manage to execute the wall bonks perfectly, so I haven't managed to consistently get this myself yet, but hey, it's a work in progress. 
And that is everything you need to know about Cloud Top Cruise on 150cc, or almost everything. I really wish I could go into more detail on how to optimize your performance on this track, but like I said, you basically just have to learn and relearn the track every time you start making even minor improvements because of the way the cycles are laid out. I hope that the general advice that I laid out for how to handle the Thundercloud section and the specific details on the rest of the track are at least enough to help you get started on improving your own times. Let me know down in the comments actually if and how much time you were able to save from following the advice I laid out in this video because I'd be really interested to hear how much improvement you're actually getting from these videos. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training and as always I will see you in the next video.